Hey, hey, welcome to another Speaker Tech Tuesday. Just a quick tech tip or a tool uh, that's designed to help you become a better professional speaker. This week, we are going low tech. Yeah, that's right. This is a note card. Yeah, and this is a Sharpie. Uh, and we're gonna talk about those today because in last week's Tech Tuesday, I asked you if you wanted to know why I bring a note card on stage with me each and every time I do a gig. And you responded with a resounding yes, so here we go. So this note card is my set list. Yeah, it's a list of bits I'm doing for a specific keynote speech. Now, let me just break that down a little for you and explain why I bring a set list on stage with me and when I've had to use it and why maybe you should consider doing this as well. Now, if you're in a band or you were ever in a band, you already know what a set list is. It's the list of songs played by a singer or a band in concert, and it's usually the order they're playing, planning on, you know, performing them. So Instead of songs, a keynote speaker has bits. And a bit is like a five to seven minute segment that I can perform on cue. It's a rehearsed piece of content with a beginning, a middle, and an end. And every one of my speeches uh, has a, a bit with a name. Okay, so for example, like in my most referable speech, this is for the loyalty loop, I have bits with titles like Info Overload or Meatloaf or Galileo or Buy a Car or The Loop um, or maybe Tulsa Renew or Rackspace or Cabbage. Like these are the names. Now these names might not mean anything to you, but they do for me. You see, each one of these bits is like a song title. And if you asked me to perform any one of these bits, I could dive right in right this second. Now, here's the thing. Any keynote speech is just a, a collection of bits that I put together for a specific client. So think of that as like the specific concerts playlist. For example, this week's keynote might be for like a B2B audience, which means I'm gonna include the rack space bit, but not meatloaf. But next week's audience might be a bunch of social media marketing uh, you know, professionals. So I am gonna do meatloaf and then I'm gonna add Jenny Doan. You see, I'm swapping in and out the bits for each audience I'm addressing to just craft that bespoke set list. Now, in addition to the bits I'm going to do, I add the time for each bit to my set list. And as you can see here, I, I then total it all up at the right hand side so that I can make sure it fits into the time allotted. I also add like the date that I'll be speaking, the location it is, the name of the conference. Uh, I also add well, name, names of people that I need to know on stage. You know, for example, like who's introducing me or who's coming up afterwards so I can say, you know, thank you, Jill, or maybe who the sponsor of my session is. So those are, that's what's on the set list. But why should you consider creating a set list? Well, I think there's three main reasons. One, it's a perfect rehearsal vehicle to guide you through the rehearsal for a specific gig. So I use it in the days running up to a gig to make sure I know the set list inside and out and my timing is accurate. And then two, it's a wonderful security blanket. Yes. Before I go on stage, as part of like my mental exercises backstage, I take out my set list and I envision my performance of every bit on stage. I see the set list manifesting itself as a perfect performance. So that's that's reason number two. And reason number three, it's, it's like an emergency resource for if or when things go sideways. Look, if something goes awry at an event, having something concrete you can latch back onto to get things back on track is so important. So here's what I mean. I've had to pull out my set list only three times on stage, but it's those three times when I needed it the most. Once I was speaking in Estonia and the power went out in the entire venue, and while the AV team like powered everything back on, I relied on my set list to keep the session on track. Uh, there was another time, at an event in San Diego where the screens on stage just froze and so they couldn't see my presentation uh, and so without my set list I would have been all over the place and I uh, it would have been really tough for me to execute uh, and get my mind back on the subject and at the massive uh, event in Dallas uh, my session was interrupted by a tornado warning. So after we all filed back into the conference room, I pulled out my set list and I grabbed a flip chart that we put on stage and I delivered like a 20 minute version of my 45 minute speech by just choosing, picking and choosing the right bits from my set list so that I was on track. 
You see, when the poop hits the fan, there's one thing I can guarantee. It is easy to forget what your plan was. It's really difficult to get back on track, to get back in the game. But with a set list, suddenly you have an analog resource to turn to. So your event organizer and your audience get the most out of your session. So there you have it. The analog tech tip that I use for every gig to help rehearse, uh, to help time, to help remember and deliver a great experience even when the poop hits the fan. So I'll see you next Tuesday with another Speaker Tech Tuesday. And here's to a healthy referral tree. Have a good week.